Hey guys, Joshua Dippick Channel, and in this video we're going to be fixing this C9 cat that has a bad water pump. How do you know? Well, that's a pretty good indication. See, coolant, or actually just water in this instance, because the coolant had already all drained out and the customer was just refilling it with water, is just pouring out of the shaft here. So, yeah, this water pump's going to need to be replaced. Drove in like this. And did a C7 water pump video a long time ago, but this is a C9 one, very similar though. So what we gotta do is we have to pull this lower coolant hose off. We're gonna take the belt off. We're gonna have to take the uh, this hose, which is the coolant, to the air compressor off. There's also a line you can't see that runs to the thermostat housing. That has to be removed. Alternator needs to come off. Alternator bracket needs to come off. Not a super horrible job, but one that maybe if you have a C9 or a C7, I haven't seen in my other video, it's kind of, it's useful to see. So a serpentine belt, if you've never done a serpentine belt tensioner before, that's all you have to do. Generally, they're half inch drive. And if you move the tensioner towards the belt tightening, it'll make sense if you've ever done it before, it'll loosen it and you can pull it off. And the reason I'm pulling off is obviously this is a belt driven water pump. Not all cats have belt driven water pumps, all the larger ones like C10, C12, C13, C15. They all use gear-driven water pumps, but the smaller ones, C7s, C9s, they use belt-driven, and they're generally easier to do, at least in this application where the radiator is on the side. If the radiator was in the rear, this would be much more difficult. Now this coolant hose here, which goes to the air compressor, appears to be original and pretty crunchy. So gonna get that replaced, no reason to reuse it. If it's been on there for 20 years and you're moving a, a hose, it's a good idea to replace it. Now there is a little bolt here with a P-clip or P-clamp, and that generally is a pain in the butt to get to, but you need to remove that in order to get the hose off. So I'm gonna need to replace that hose. Now that the hose is unbolted though, or unbolted, unthreaded from the water pump, we need to get these four bolts out. There's only four bolts that hold it on, and it really only holds about half of the water pump on, but it works. You can see the bearing had failed in this water pump and there's a shaft seal. And basically once your bearing goes out, it wipes out the shaft seal. This is a very unusual failure though for a C7 or a C9. Generally, if they're leaking, it's coming out of the weep hole, but this one, that is not the case. And since it's belt driven, this does not have oil going to the water pump, unlike the gear driven ones. So we need to remove the alternator here. The batteries were disconnected already because we were doing the starter on this also. So luckily, if you are going to be pulling the alternator, it's a very good idea to disconnect your batteries. If you don't want to, you could tape them off or just be extremely careful, but I recommend anytime you're pulling an alternator, especially a starter, anything with large uh, positive battery cables on it, it's a good idea to remove them. So getting all our bolts situated here. And I'm using this Milwaukee right angle impact. It's not a ratchet. You can't actually ratchet with this. It's just an impact. It's a low profile right angle impact. Doesn't hit super hard, but hard enough to remove these bolts, which are 12 millimeter bolts. And once the four that are holding the water, or not the water pump, this is the alternator. Once they remove the alternator, we can slide the alternator out of the way and support it. So the alternator, as you can see, has been removed here. Now, you may not know this, but there's generally two styles of alternator mounts. There's this style, which is called a pad mount. And then there's what they call a J mount. J mounts are usually the ones that have an armature that connects to the uh, alternator. These are the ones where the alternator bolts directly to it generally. And you can see I have bungee corded the alternator to the front structure. So it's supported not just by the wires. Actually, it's just pretty much supported entirely by that. And you're gonna need to loosen this hose, at least the hose clamps, and I recommend re uh, replacing it, I did. But as you can see, it will be pretty hard to film getting it off and on, but has two hose clamps, feeds coolant to the thermostat housing. You need to remove one of the clamps or both if you're gonna reuse or remove the hose. So these two little bolts, that's for the coolant supply to the water pump. And, you know, I have ratchet wrenches, folks, but I tell you the truth, I don't reach for them very often. It seems like generally if you're using a wrench, you need that really thin profile. And I usually end up reaching for just a standard combination wrench, my Snap-on 13 millimeter one here, instead of my ratchet wrench. 
Because remember when I bought them, I was like, oh, I'm gonna use these all the time. And generally, I end up using the standard wrenches more. I, not sure why, I guess I get more frustrated when I go to grab the ratchet wrench and then it doesn't fit, than just getting the wrench, the combo wrench in the first place. And the other problem with the ratchet wrenches is I don't like breaking bolts loose with them. I will tighten, but generally I like breaking bolts loose with normal wrenches or sockets. So I'm not whacking this real hard. I'm just tapping it because it has a paper style gasket on it. The new gasket's not like that though. We'll explain that in a little bit. And generally they adhese together a little bit. So that's off. We're now ready to remove our water pump. So I'm gonna be using my Air Impact. Now I've had this for, let's see, February 24, 2009. That's when I bought that. Most of my air tools and electric tools, I'll engrave the date that I bought them on there just to see when I got them, how long they last. And this has never been rebuilt. I've, I don't know how many bolts I've loosened and tightened with this gun, but I've noticed with the electrics, anytime I'm using an extension, they just, they just lose like all their power, it seems like. So mostly been using my air tools slightly more now. I still have all my electric stuff. You can see there earlier I was using my right angle electric, but it seems like the air just hits a lot harder in general, if you're using an extension particularly. If you're just putting it on directly with a socket, the electrics are, they do fine. So getting our bolts out of here, they're all the same size bolts. They're 16 millimeter head. See them there? Playing some Jenga, I guess. Bolt Jenga on that rounded power steering uh, reservoir. Should probably put those on something flat, and I will. Luckily, they didn't fall off, though, folks. So, in the last bolt out, once our bolts are out, you're actually ready to remove it. Now, I've already loosened the thermostat housing um, clamp that I talked about. See, I'm tapping it there. It's already messed up, folks. You're not going to hurt it. It's leaking a little bit extra, but. What are you gonna do? So the water pump supplies coolant into the oil cooler, which is directly behind it. And the oil cooler mount is part of the block. You might hear a crunching sound. What is that? It's a compactor. It reminds me of that scene in Austin Powers where he's driving the uh, compactor towards the guy and the guy's just screaming, but he's like a hundred feet away and he won't move out of the way. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about, but always reminds me of that. So what I'm doing here is the hose pick. I'm trying to break the adhesion off of that hose to the water pump here. And as you can see, it's not the best location. You can't really see the hose, but we got her. Best part about a hose pick is trying to get the adhesion off of parts on hoses. And there we go. This weird looking water pump, that's the C9 water pump. So we're gonna set her over here and we've got our new water pump already. And we need to swap some fittings. So let's set it over here. And this is my new coworker. And as you can see, he has a Cummins sticker, but not a cat sticker. <coughs> what is he thinking? So here's our Reman water pump. You can see some of these ports need to be swapped over with the fittings or plugs from the old one. It's really only three. Most of them are these hex head style ones. Large one, small one, and that one for the hose that we're gonna replace. Luckily the pulleys do not have to be removed. One large hole and one small hole, and it's two O-rings, and that's pretty much it. And yeah, actually a lot of the guys are Cummins guys, not really cat guys. You don't find a lot of experience cat engine guys anymore. Uh, a lot of guys now knew Cummins more. So that's our sealant areas there and just need to clean these areas up. I've already cleaned this one up. As you can see all the gasket materials removed off of that. And this is like I said a reman one and look at the casting on here. You can definitely tell this is used. There's cavitation and pitting on the ceiling face of this which I've had problems with cat reman before on this had them even leak before and it irritates me because I wish they would mill that or something instead of leaving it like that. And the new gasket is steel. It is not the paper type. So we're gonna use a little bit of this Mr. Gasket sealant just to help the gasket stick to the sealing surface so it isn't destroyed.
This week's instruction of the week comes from Mark, and Mark sent this C15 picture, and you can see the outside and the inside and the side of the engine here all at once. Looks like the main cap and the crankshaft snapped in half. Probably the crankshaft first, but who knows? Pretty broken. See, there's chunks of the block all over the place here. Not sure the cause of the fail. You can see uh, heat marks there in the main cap, so maybe it spun a bearing first before breaking. Not sure, but my, my theory is, if you look closely, you see a fleet guard in Cummins red next to this cat yellow engine, folks, and it's probably a chemical reaction between yellow and red. So getting back to work here, you can see we are basically ready for reassembly here. We've got the alternators out of the way. We've got our new water pump, and I haven't painted it yet. I generally like to paint when it's back on the engine or machine if there's nothing real sensitive that needs to be not painted next to it. Luckily, this one, there's no real risk of overspray or anything on a water pump job like this, and I don't like spraying where their ceiling surface is open, so I like to put it on first. As you can see, I've removed and installed the plugs, and I have put the new hose on. That's almost impossible to see going up to the thermostat housing. Fortunately, you can't see that, but just, just the way that hose sits, it's pretty much impossible to get a camera angle on it. Now, the hardest part of this is just getting this water pump into the little hose because you can't see the little hose. So you're just trying to, by feel, get it started in there while not pushing the O-rings out because the O-rings on the back, yes, they are in a recessed groove, but it is possible to knock them out of place. So generally what I like to do is once I get it in the hose and get a couple bolts in, I don't tighten the bolts before I put a mirror behind there and make sure that the O-rings are still in place. Luckily this has a purple and an orange O-ring, so it's very easy to see the color dis um, disparity between the steel cast water pump housing, the yellow engine, the purple and orange O-rings, just to make sure that they haven't moved out of place. So if we can ever get this water pump in place, hey, we got it. We're gonna get the bolts in. Now, like I said, I always, anything you're installing, always put the bolts in by hand and try to get all of them in before tightening any of them. Every time I put even three out of four in and then go to tighten one, the fourth one doesn't align. So that's a good trick is to always hand start every bolt before tightening any of them. So as you can see, we are ready to get our other bolts in and I'm gonna be using an extension here because the bolts are somewhat recessed. So if you're trying to thread them in by just your hand without this socket and extension, it'd be a real pain in the butt. Now this is still considered hand tightening because you're not using a ratchet or a wrench or something, but we're just gonna get them all started, like I said. Now some of these have the water pump uh, pulley that has to be swapped over from the other water pump. You can see this one's actually just pressed on by the factory, so luckily you don't have to mess with that. And it's these are weird the way there's only four bolts and they're only half the water pump, but they seal. Like I said, the C7s are pretty much identical to these. And I've never seen the seals actually leak ever. It's always either the weep hole or on this one, it was actually the shaft seal, but that is very unusual. So we've got our last one here, which is the bottom one. The two lower ones are the hardest they're closest to the pulley, so makes it more difficult. And like I said, folks, this is a fairly easy, straightforward one. If this was a rear radiator, not a side radiator RV, would have been um, much more difficult. So all we're doing here, folks, is torquing them to 41 foot-pounds. Generally, if I can get a torque wrench on it, and I know there is a torque specification, I will torque bolts. That way you know they're not over or under tightened, and they're uniformly tightened. And then this happens. Let's see it again in slow motion. So torquing the bolt there, pulling it back, and our friend of the pulley decides it needs my socket more than I did. Now generally, folks, it's very hard to find your sockets. They tend to go hiding. This one, however, I think this is the first time in 18 years that it was actually closer to me than where it dropped from. Usually they like find their way between the tires, under the differential, in a vat of grease. I'm not sure why, but yeah, luckily this one just rolled right to me. So yeah, we're just torquing all the bolts. Always start in the center, work your way out generally, unless it actually says what procedure, but 
This is probably the first person ever twerk water pump bolts on a C7. Or, or sorry, this is a C9, but extremely similar water pump design. So once they're all torqued, I just go through and check them again. And then really, all the hard stuff's pretty much done. All you have to do is we're gonna get the new line on there, swap over the single last fittings. However, the new line ended up not needing that fitting. But here is our gasket that we're gonna be installing. Like I said, I put a little bit of that gasket sealant to this thing. Now, if you know me, you know I hate silicone in general, unless you're using it on a three-sided joint. Uh, there's few instances where I'll use silicone in a gasket. Uh, I generally, if I do, if I'm not comfortable with the sealing surface, generally I'll use this gasket adhesive, which generally helps glue the gasket to there better, since steel, as you know, does not have a lot of give. So all we're doing here is, like I said before, we're going to hand tighten everything before we torque it, and then you're just going to tighten these. And that, like I said, this is your lower radiator hose. Might be hard to tell since the radiator's out of the way, but that's where it goes. As you can see, we have painted our water pump. Yes, it is a lot brighter yellow than the other ones, but over time it will match. We've got our alternator back on. Look at that, new hose, new water pump, not leaking. Like I said, the paint will match over time. It's, uh, we got 25 year old paint here compared to uh, one day old paint, so. Did a good job on this one, I will leave you with this. Check. Supposedly they ordered it. Supposedly. It's okay, I scrub all the audio out. I wanna say thanks for watching, and if you this helped you out at all, just let me know in the comments section, and click the like button. And like I said before, thanks for watching.